take it away. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. This is a really wide room, so I hope uh, people aren't going to hurt their necks too much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about accelerating innovation through analogy mining. Uh, I'm Tom, and this is joint work with uh, Joel Chan and Nikki Kitur, our colleagues from Carnegie Mellon University, and, uh, and uh, Daphna Shachaf, my PhD advisor, who apologizes for not being able to make it here today because she's just having twins. <laughs> now, to start off, does anyone know who this person is? Any guesses? Well, this is Thomas Edison widely considered America's greatest inventor of all time. He invented the phonograph, the motion picture camera, the light bulb, and uh, many other inventions. Now, we recently came across an interview where Edison lays out his criteria for what makes a great inventor. And the most important quality. Any ideas here from uh, all us inventors? Well, plenty of money to throw away. Now, the second uh, quality is a bit more lofty, it's imagination, okay? And the third essential quality is a logical mind that sees analogies. Now, this is interesting because it allows us to get a glimpse into Edison's creative process. You can take a look at what he said in 1888 in an interview, where he speaks about drawing an analogy between what the phonograph did for the ear in terms of recording sound, to his work in progress on what would become the motion picture camera and what it will do for the eye in terms of recording. Now Edison used analogies in his creative process, but more generally analogies appear all throughout the course of important discoveries and innovations. From the ancient Greeks to the Wright brothers who took the mechanism of a bicycle and transferred it via analogy to the domain of flight to innovate there, to a smaller but nice example recently of a car mechanic who watched some YouTube video online showing how to extract a cork stuck inside a wine bottle in some random party. And he uh, took this extraction mechanism and again via analogy uh, transferred it to solve a completely different problem of easing childbirth and extracting stuck babies with the same kind of mechanism. So this car mechanic saw a piece of information online and uh, innovated via analogy. And we as data researchers ask, can we take this kind of small scale example and apply it on a much larger scale? So we have a patent database, we have Kickstarter and the likes, we have scientific publications, of course, all of which present us with an opportunity to use these big data sets of ideas to mine for analogies and then accelerate innovation and discovery just like that car mechanic did. So this is our goal here, to automatically discover analogies in these kind of large, messy, unstructured data sets so that we can boost innovation and creativity. Now we have some challenges ahead of us, of course. And in particular, finding analogies is hard for humans and it's also hard for machines for similar reasons. So searching through huge data sets like those for structural abstract similarities is of course difficult, and it's not only the sheer scale. Multiple cognitive psychology studies have shown us that people have a hard time with thinking in terms of abstract structural similarities and analogies. People in particular tend to be geared to these surface similarities, superficial matches, near analogies that share attributes, like let's say phones and different kinds of phones, and not the more distant relations we are interested in. For example, say we take this uh, scraper that scrapes ice off a car. And now let's take this kitchen pan that has some burnt oil stuck onto it, and it's in need of scraping. Someone urgently needs to scrape it. And um, we see some structural abstract connection between this source domain and the target domain that goes way beyond the surface. Now, machines also have a hard time with, uh, with uh, finding analogies. To get a quick understanding why, let's take a look at what researchers did in the past in the field of computational analogy. Creating uh, curated data sets with highly relational, rich structures describing things. 
For example, this is what the kind of logic-based representation may look like for that cork extraction mechanism we saw before. That we can immediately see this is like very difficult to obtain, if not infeasible, and simply does not scale to the kind of large, messy data sets we're interested in, like patents, for example. In particular, according to some estimates, it can take an inordinate amount of hours to come up with these kind of representations uh, for real complex products. Now, NLP and information retrieval methods, of course, do scale, but they do particularly well at surface similarity, when we have similar source and target domains. So again, going back to that scraper, let's say this time we have some product text with it, and again, we have the kitchen pan with some text, and we see how the distribution of language is completely different between the two. So that if we use, for example, some topic model or something similar, we get completely different space and we won't capture the kind of abstract structural similarities we're interested in. And we are interested in capturing these similarities so that we can find analogies in real data and use that to innovate. So our first tip is let's get some data. So we go to a site called Quirky, which is a crowdsourced innovation site where people come up with lots of ideas, write them in kind of natural, messy, long language, often like in this pet water dispenser example you see over there. And on top of this data, we build a simple search interface, allowing crowd workers to find us examples of analogies. So this is pretty simple. Here's an example. We give people a target document, say these headphones that are able to control your phone or control some app. And then we have people find examples of analogies for this. So for example, a user here enters the word control, uh, gets back a result set from the quirky data and looks for analogies. And if they find an analogy, we get a match, which is a positive example of an analogy. In the same way, we collect negative examples, which are the implicit rejects as in standard information retrieval, the top results a user viewed but did not select as a match. And we also collect the query and some other traces. And now we have some data. Let's use it. Our first attempt in previous work was to try some supervised learning. In particular, we learned a similarity metric reflecting analogy. We used a Siamese neural network and we customized it by incorporating in the query so that we can focus on the parts of the text that are more structurally related because that's what the user used to find analogies. For example, the word control there in the previous example, or maybe the word scrape in that scraper and uh, focusing the attention on the structurally related things and less on the surface features. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this previous work, but the bottom line was this. Accuracy did pretty well. We beat some baselines. Incorporating in the query did even better. But the not so good news was that this process was costly, noisy, and slow. So if you want to generalize now and scale this up to more examples, it's a hard task for humans. As we said, people have a hard time with finding analogies. So we got quite a small amount of data and quite a high portion of those superficial surface matches because that's what people tend to be better at. Which meant that when we fed in the raw text into that Siamese neural network with the kind of size and quality of the data, it didn't really have a, a, a hope of learning rich enough structures that capture uh, analogies in the way we'd like it to. So in this current work, we address this issue by the following. We seek a weak structural representation that's expressive enough to capture analogies, but is also easy enough to be learned and extracted. So somewhere in the sweet spot between that very rich logical representation we saw and the raw text. Now it turns out that in cognitive psychology theory, Analogies and the way people think about them are deeply related to the purpose and mechanism of an idea. So purpose, we can think of it, of it as what does a product do, what's the goal, and mechanism is how it does what it does and how it works. So you have the scraper again. Its purpose could be to remove ice from a car. Its mechanism is a brush, a blade, and a grip. Now, assuming for a second we have access to this kind of purpose and mechanism representation, we can now perform some core analogical tasks. So we can, for example, find two products in your database that share the same purpose, but use a very different mechanism. Or we can do what's known as repurposing, 
uh, where we want to find two products that share the same mechanism but have very different purposes. Just like that extraction mechanism that <coughs> solved completely different problems. So our key insight in this, uh, in this work is to learn vector representations, capturing purposes and mechanisms of inventions so that we can use them to perform these core tasks and then use that to boost innovation and creativity. First step is let's collect some annotations of purposes and mechanisms. So we go to Mechanical Turk again and we give people our quirky products and we ask them to highlight different parts of the text. So we ask them to highlight parts uh, related to mechanism, like in this uh, pillow, uh, for example. It's an amazing pillow, by the way. <laughs> and it, uh, the mechanism is a pillow. It's an alarm clock, Bluetooth, all kinds of sensors. And the purpose is to improve and monitor sleep or wake up comfortably. I don't actually know how comfortably you'd wake up with all those sensors around you, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, let's, get, let's say it works. Now, we've collected those annotations. Now let's build some targets. Targets because we want to predict and extract purposes and mechanisms. And in this work, we're interested in capturing some overall soft representation of purposes and mechanisms. We're not interested in capturing the association of each word in the text, but only finding some soft vector representation that captures the overall purpose and mechanism, unlike in sequence-to-sequence -sequence tasks, for example. So we do something simple. We, like, we look at our K annotations corresponding to the K annotators for each product. And we have two sets, a set of mechanism annotations and a set of purpose annotations. And we aggregate over these by taking the pre-trained globe word vectors, taking a TFIDF-based weighting of them, such that we get two soft weighted averages, each corresponding to purpose and mechanism, with different weights assigning different importances to words corresponding to purposes or mechanisms, which is, of course, related to a common approach for textual similarity, tasks, and representations. Now, having built these uh, targets, we now want to predict them. Because when we want to move to like larger data sets like patterns, scientific publications with millions of documents, we want to have a model that's able to predict these things and extract them automatically. So we do this in a multiple output regression setting. We have some RNN that learns a shared product representation for the products. And on top of that, another layer that extracts purpose and mechanism features finally predicting the target tuple, which is just the purpose and mechanism soft vectors. Now, with this basic architecture, we first ask, what kind of concepts will we be able to learn? And to do a quick reality check, we take our purpose and mechanism vectors, and we model them as a sparse linear combination of words. And we indeed find that overall, our mechanism words are of a much more mechanical nature, so to speak, than the purpose words. Like, for example, in this uh, yogurt maker machine over here. Now, that was a nice sanity check, but going back to our main task of finding analogies. We want to first ask, how accurate are we in retrieving analogies? So we take our positive examples and our negative examples from that search interface we mentioned before. And we rank all pairs in the test data based on their distances with respect to various representations. And then we measure accuracy. And we find that our model outperforms all kinds of standard retrieval and text representation uh, methods and metrics with a few important points. First, our model is unsupervised with respect to the main task of analogy. We only learn purpose and mechanism representations with no supervision at all um, about analogies. Second important point is that people tend to give us quite a high portion of surface similarities. As we said, that's what people are good at. Our test set has quite a high portion of those. And these NLP baselines, as we said, are actually favored by that kind of sim surface similarity. And we're still able to beat these baselines because we also retrieve the more distant examples in addition to the superficial ones. Finally, we, of course, also explored other richer NLP methods to represent the text, like semantic parsing and entailment. And all of these methods actually perform pretty poorly because A, it's noisy text, it's a challenging task, and most importantly, we want to be able to focus on what we really want, which is purpose and mechanism, which isn't really directly reflected by any current NLP method that we are aware of. Now, so that was an important check. How accurate are we in retrieving analogies? 
But the main uh, evaluation we do goes back to what we started with. Analogy is at the core of innovation, core of discovery, and we like to measure our ability to boost people's creativity using analogies. And to do so, we uh, take a look at an ideation task, which is a common creative task in cognitive psychology. And we ask people to redesign an existing product and we give them inspirations, okay? So what does this look like? We have a cell phone charger case, for example. This is a case that charges your phone. And we ask people to find other ways to solve the same problem. And we give them random inspirations, which are just random products from the quirky data set, very diverse, not relevant, but hopefully opening up uh, people's minds and ideas. We give them surface inspirations, which is what they'd get from standard search, very relevant examples, but not diverse. And finally, we give them, uh, with our method, diverse uh, results that are still relevant. And how do we do this? So in this case, we're looking for near-purpose far mechanism analogies because we want to find new ways to solve the same problem. So near-purpose far mechanism. And the way we do this is we cluster products with respect to their purposes. So now we have clusters that are cohesive with respect to purpose. And then looking around our task C document, we diversify with respect to mechanism which means we solve, solve a kind of maximum diversification problem, which keeps relevance with respect to purpose, but diversifies with respect to mechanism using a, um, a uh, greedy algorithm with standard approximation guarantees. Now, the random baseline gives us random products all over the place. The surface-based superficial matches give very relevant things, like more cases, more phones, and in our approach, and this is a real example from our data, we're able to retrieve here at the bottom corner a human pulley power generator suit. Now, this is a suit that has all kinds of pulleys connected to it so it can generate power. It's a pretty silly invention, if you ask me. But, um, but the uh, abstract purpose here is to generate power, which is in an, in an abstract way is also the purpose of the charger, generating power, just very different mechanism. Now, we give people multiple such tasks, like that case, and they generate hundreds of ideas. For example, one worker generated there at the top corner, for our analogy-based approach, a case that tracks steps and generates power using movement, which was uh, created after viewing that uh, pulley suit, and hopefully inspired by it, generating power using movement. Now, to make this more quantitative, we take these hundreds of ideas, we give a panel of five external judges uh, all these ideas, and we ask them to rate them as either good or bad, uh, following standard ideation protocol, which is measured by novelty, use different technology, measured by quality, achieve the same purpose as the target, and feasibility, which basically means um, comply with the laws of nature and don't use time travel in your invention, uh, don't do that. And we find a substantial judge agreement as to what makes a good or a bad idea. Now, it turns out that in our approach, uh, which gives distant connections, we're able to uh, inspire people to come up with much more creative ideas. We created both a higher portion and higher absolute number of good ideas. And uh, even when modeling the different confounders that go into our kind of elaborate experiment design, we still get the same substantial boost in people's creative ability and the quality of their ideas as rated by the judges, using these distant analogies that are able to open people's minds and explore the design space in a more diverse way. So to wrap up, analogies are useful for innovation. We have lots of idea repositories that give us a big opportunity to find these analogies automatically. In this work, we learn and leverage weak structural representations that capture the purposes and mechanisms of products, ideas, inventions. We use them to find analogies with higher accuracy by focusing on the core parts of what we need for the task. And in an ideation study, we help people be more creative and come up with better ideas. In the future, we'd also like to extend this to more domains like patents, corporate data, millions of products, scientific publications, all the many millions of ideas out there. 
We like to try richer models, of course, to capture finer levels of abstraction and uh, structures. And finally, also more applications for the purposes and mechanisms of products. For example, perhaps in search on recommender systems, it could be important to target the purpose of what a product does. Thank you.